Good evening and welcome to the Nursing Careers webinar. My name is Nick Boudre, the Supervisor of Career and College Programs at St. Clair County Risa, also representing Blue Water College Access Network this evening. Uh, we're very pleased this evening to bring you the fourth and final installment of the 2021 Fall Essential Series by discussing one of Michigan's hottest careers, nursing. Nursing is currently the second highest in demand highest paying career on Michigan's hot 50 careers until the year 2028. Uh, there's an anticipated 7,000 annual job openings resulting in a 10% industry growth for nursing over the next six years. This is not including the dramatic impact the recent pandemic has had on this profession as we see nursing shortages across hospitals throughout our country. But tonight, we're going to take the conversation a little further than just the data and talk about this career pathway, the vast opportunities it presents, and also diverse career progressions and education options before and after high school graduation to secure employment in these positions. We have a great uh, lineup for you this evening. First, we have a nurse anesthetist or otherwise known as a CRNA, a nurse practitioner, NP, a health careers exploration instructor at our career technical education center um, that's also a former registered nurse RN and all having experience in nursing sometime throughout their career before their current roles. Our format this evening will be a 30 to 40 minute conversation with our guests as we talk about their education, their experiences and their day to day in life in this pathway. Uh, there will be a question and answer segment at the end of that presentation where the audience can ask questions in the chat uh, button at the bottom of your screen. You can enter questions throughout the night and then we'll read them to the panelists during that segment. Feel free to ask questions at any time. Uh, with that being said, I'm, I'd like to invite our first guest, Carrie Cook. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Yes, now Carrie, I know I did not say that right, but a CNA is a nurse. It's a um, CRNA, it's a Certified Registered Nurse Anesthetist. Okay, and you currently work at uh, McLaren High or at Hospital, correct? Correct. Very good, and you are an alumni of St. Clair High School. Uh, correct. At, so let's start right there at St. Clair High School. Um, after graduating from St. Clair High School, what really led you to per pursue a career in nursing? Uh, well, I had a sports injury in high school. I fell in cheerleading, and that led me to le um, spend some time in the hospital. And then I had a couple surgeries. Um, during one of the surgeries, I actually happened to have one of the male CRNA sit down and talk to me about his career. And it just kind of stuck with me so that I just kind of followed that role. Now, when we were talking about uh, the event and getting ready for um, this evening and get uh, in prep for your segment, you talked a little bit how, the, you know, your path to nursing to start after graduation, you were actually preparing for the program prior to that date. Talk to us a little bit more about that. When I was in high school, I had a, um, I told my guidance counselor that I was thinking about nursing and she really steered me in the way of dual enrolling into SC4. So I started um, classes at SC4 when I was a junior in high school. And by the time I had graduated um, my senior year, I had about eight classes done. So I had most of my prereqs done for nursing before I even started college. Wow. Um, what type of, and you mentioned prereqs, and a lot of these high school students right now are familiar with that term, but they might not know the courses. What, what type of prereqs did you take when you were duly enrolled? Or these are a lot of classes that um, a college freshman or college sophomore would take when they enter college. Okay, um, let's see. I took some, a couple English classes. I took anatomy and physiology. Um, I think I took a, uh, like a geography class. You know, I'm really, really not sure what classes is what since it's been like 15 years but i know i took okay. quite a few of them no that's great and, I, and that's a really answered the question you know a lot of those those classes that you typically spend your first and second year then you apply to the nursing program you had done 
So Correct. right into the nursing program right away. Um, how did that shift? What classes, you know, what did that program look like at SC4? Um, well, I was pretty young. So, you know, I still live with my parents during all that. So for me, it wasn't, um, it wasn't as grueling and as stressful as maybe some of the other students that took it later on in life or who had more responsibilities than me. Um, but it was still a pretty, pretty intense, um, you know, clinicals, uh, classes, you had to get really good grades. I think that was probably the hardest part is the grading there at SE4. Um, you have to get like a B to pass, but their Bs are, I think, are like 85% or something like that. Um, but it was, it was a very good program. And, and in a lot of the nursing programs at SE4, I know in other college and universities have in other programs for other careers have GPA requirements. And I think it's really important. I'm glad you brought that up. Um, and you mentioned clinicals. What were your clinicals like when you were in that program? Oh, um, I remember them being a couple days a week, but I really, I really don't recall most of the hours of that program, to be honest. So a little bit of a mix between in classrooms and then in a couple of weeks on clinicals. Um, when so you graduated when did you how many years did you go to SC4 in that program I went um it was two years so I graduated high school in 2003 and then I went right into the nursing program in 2003 and I graduated in 2005 as an RN as an RN and then where did your career take you from there well I took um I took a job right away at McLaren McComb as an RN on a cardiac step down unit and I spent about two and a half years doing that while I got married and started a family. And then I quickly decided that floor nursing wasn't for me. So I took a transfer into the OR to become a circulating nurse, just to kind to kind of see what a um, nurse anesthetist does on like a daily, daily basis, just to kind of see if I wanted to go back to school for that. So once I got into the OR, that's when I decided that I would start my BSN. Um, and it took me about two years RN to BSN program. Um, that program was a little easier. I don't want to say easier. It was just a lot of busy work. There wasn't any clinicals. It was, um, it was a lot of like didactic, a lot of paper writing, but it was definitely something you can do on your own, your own term, take as many or, um, as many classes as you'd like during that time. Okay. Um, and for the, the audience this evening, what does BSN stand for? Uh, bachelor's of science nursing. Okay. And how did that open up opportunities um, in comparison to an RN? Um, basically, at this point, uh, BSN or bachelor's is basically just a gateway to um, your master's or any other advanced practice degree. Um, there's not many jobs that you need a BSN in unless you're thinking about like management or so forth. Um, it's just a gateway to your advanced degrees. Okay. Well, I'm going to rewind just a little bit and go back to when you started at McLaren home as an RN and you were mm -hmm. in a cardiac step down unit. What was some of your day to day responsibilities as you started your career as an RN during on that unit? Um, it was, um, you know, it was a telemetry unit, which is like cardiac where you um, were patients that were a little bit more involved um, that had like some kind of cardiac issue. We were monitoring their hearts, maybe post status like um, heart attack or so forth. Um, we'd have like four to five patients like for the duration of our shift. And um, you just kind of watch the rhythms and basically everything you do as like a nurse. What was uh, your favorite part, whether it was um, when you first started your career off, what was your favorite part of being an RN? Uh, the camaraderie. You definitely, um, you definitely get some good friends through all of it. Um, you know, you spend a lot of time with these people, time that like you don't necessarily spend as much time with your family or your friends outside of work. So you really just uh, grow some strong relationships. That's great. And when you went from the step down unit into the OR, uh, did 
did your responsibilities change? Did they increase, decrease? You know, did you take on additional responsibilities in that role? Um, it was diff definitely different responsibilities. Um, so I was a circulator in the OR, which meant just um, I did one surgery, one patient at a time. So it was a completely different role in nursing. Um, it wasn't hands-on. It was, um, you know, you did a lot of different roles. Um, get a patient ready for surgery. You know, um, make sure like you're charting and you're the only unsterile person in the room. That helps out with everybody else in the, um, the OR. Okay. And so now I, I fast forward to where you're talking about getting your BSN. Um, and you worked during that time. And how did you handle that, you know, workload and also the program schedule at the same with, you know, high demand career without, you know, getting your BSN? Oh, I think we're, they've lost you a little bit. With Just one or two class. There you are. There we are. We're back. Oh, you're back. All right, um, and, and just to reiterate that question, how did you handle that work, the work and program balance throughout those years? Um, you know, I started off with just like one or two classes until I felt comfortable kind of moving up with that. Um, like I stated before, it, I didn't have to leave my house for that program. It was just basically something that I did on my downtime. It was, um, it was a lot of busy work, but it wasn't hard work. It was like a lot of paper writing, a lot of research. Um, so like in the spare time, when I had some time, I would, um, just kind of get to that. Um, but it wasn't anything outside of the house. And where did you, um, what program did you enroll at? I went to Oakland university for my bachelor's. Okay. Oh, you very good. A lot of our students and families, uh, enrolled there for other programs as well. Um, mm -hmm. so you, you kind of did a career exploration. We talked a lot about with high school students and even middle school students about the export, the importance of exploring careers. And you did that while you were actually employed as a, as an RN and got your BSN and mm -hmm. you were looking at the CRNA, um, role and you, you knew that was something you're interested in. So where did you go from there when you were in the OR and you knew this was something that uh, you wanted to pursue? Um, so once I realized that I wanted to become a nurse anesthetist, I had to do a lot of research on how to get there. It's kind of a strenuous process to even apply. You have to have like certain things before you can apply. So I knew that um, even to like apply to CRNA school, I had to have ICU experience. So from there, I left McLaren, um, McLaren McComb, and uh, went to McLaren Port Huron to work in the ICU for a year. You need at least a year of ICU experience. So once I had that ICU experience, then I applied to um, U of M Flint for my CRNA school. Now, did you continue to work? Uh, you applied to that program and were accepted? No, once school started, it's like an August entry. Um, I, I did have to give up my employment. It's a, a full-time school didactics and about 40 hours a week of clinical. Okay. Um, and if it's compared to the BSN program and also the programs that you've been in before, um, what's that program look like? Um, is very, it was a very strenuous, very, very hard program. Like I'd mentioned before, like my RN school, I was young and I lived at home with my parents. Fast forward seven years later, I was married and had a three-year-old. Um, you know, my responsibilities had changed quite a bit going back to school. Um, you know, your days start very early for CRNA school. You, I don't know, driving to Flint every day. I was up at like 4.30 at the hospital by 5.30. My days would end when you were able to go home. Sometimes it was six, seven, eight o'clock at night. Start again the next day. So every day was just different. And then you add in, you know, four or five classes, you know, a semester on top of that. It was just very, very difficult and grueling. So what was a, just a rough percentage that you were in the hospital or you were in the classroom for that program? 
So each semester it changes. Um, it's a lot different now because it's a doctors of anesthesia practice degree, whereas I have a masters of um, anesthesia. So for when I went through it, it was like the first semester was mostly didactics and we were in the clinical three days a week. And then the second semester it was one day, one day class and then four days of clinical. So um, it was mostly based on clinical. And how long did that program take to graduate? So it took me two years because I have a master's degree, but now it takes 36 months. Six months, okay. So after you graduated, uh, it, did you go right to McLaren? Correct. Mm -hmm. And what's a day-to-day -day look like now as a CRNA? Um, you know, my day usually starts at 7 a.m. Surgeries start at 7.30. Um, I can usually do about three to five surgeries a day, which means um, I take patients back to surgery. We induce anesthesia with like medications through the IV. I keep them asleep with anesthesia gases. And then at the end of the surgery, we turn everything off and we wake the patient up and we start all over again with the next one. Well, I, uh, I always enjoy, well, the next couple questions and, and then, uh, the end of kind of your segment is I'm going to ask the tough one is like, you know, what's the most difficult part about being a nurse or a CRNA, you know, the, the challenges that you face? You know, that question is, um, I'm sure we can all relate to it right now with um, a lot of things have changed in the last year and a half. And I know every other nurse that's listening can definitely agree that the challenges have definitely been there in the last year and a half. Um, the roles have changed quite a bit the things that we have to wear to go to work every day changes a little bit. Um, you know, in the beginning of COVID, you're definitely very scared of what, because nobody knew what was going on. And with, um, you know, especially my role being in the airway, you're a little bit more cautious, a little bit um, kind of worried there. Um, but, you know, it evolves, everything it evolves. You know, healthcare is definitely a difficult area to be in right now, but it's still very rewarding going to be my next question and that was my favorite question to ask is you know what's <laughs> your job you know even as an RN you know you graduated from from SC4 or you got your BSN and your career started progressing and I'm sure there's been a lot of highlights and a lot of rewards throughout the years maybe even it's in your current position you know what's the best part of, of, of going into the nursing field um gosh I I I mean, you definitely have a lot of re rewards, you know, when, um, you know, you see a lot of bad things, a lot of sick patients, but when you see those patients come through on the other end, you know, um, there's definitely a lot, a lot to say about that. Yeah, very good. It's rewarding like that. So we have a lot of high school students here with us tonight in this event or is actually recorded and we know a lot of students and families view it after tonight. And I always ask all our guest panelists, you know, what advice, if you could give any, to high school students that are interested in becoming a nurse or in the future becoming a CRNA, you know, what would some advice that you'd give them um, if they're sitting in the high school classroom currently? Um, explore, explore your options. There's a lot out there. Don't be set on anything in particular, like you said before. You can always move around. There's so many things in nursing you can do. It is a great job, but it, like I said, it's very taxing right now. Um, but I think that's with all jobs at the current moment. Um, just if you're thinking about it, maybe shadow, do your research. Well, thank you so much, Carrie. That was a lot of information in a short amount of time um, for our, <laughs> our audience. Um, I'm going to uh her spotlight there and and um get ready for our next guest we'll come back to carrie um here in a little bit in our question and answer period so if you have um any questions for carrie uh, you can put them in a the chat right now or you can wait uh, towards the end um our next guest is is another example of much of carrie's career um and how exploring and being interested in not only nursing um but also the um the pathways that you can take once you become an RN 
um, and what that does for your career. Now, our next guest is Jessica Heaney, um, a nurse practitioner from Port Huron um, McLaren, as well as uh, Lake Huron Medical Hospitals, um, is also a graduate of Algonac High School. Thank you so much for joining us, Jessica. Thank you for having me. Yes, they, they, we're excited to have you here. So um, you are currently a nurse practitioner or, or NP. Um, yes. Talk a little bit, as we did with Carrie, about your progression um, from the day that you left Algonac High School. So start us off with there and talk a little bit of where your career started the day you graduated. Uh, after Algonac, I actually kind of started the other pathway and went right into motherhood and um, always wanted to be a nurse, but I kind of put that on the back burner while I started having children and stuff. And a few years into it, I got into um, mental health. So I, I was kind of like a, what they call a med coordinator. You didn't need much of a degree there. I think they did their own personal training for two or three weeks. And then you pretty much were working with the mentally ill. Mine were independent, so they could sign themselves out and go about the community and still, you know, lived in that, that building and that we helped, you know, care for them and, and do continued independent daily activities. Um, then I, I uh, became a, I had my lab, my third child and I decided um, I was tired of doing a lot of work that I could have been um, better used for as far as like nursing. I always wanted to do nursing, not just you know, passing out medications and stuff. So I went into the patient care tech or, you know, a certified medical assistant. And I started working with uh, family practice physicians and stuff. And uh, um, so continued on with that for a few years. And then I um, also worked on like uh, med surge units in the hospitals and uh, in the ER a little bit as a tech. And I was still really interested in you know, how the nursing um, field was, and that's what I wanted to do. So I had a long discussion and talk with the family and jump back into going to college, um, which was difficult. But by the time I started, a lot of the classes were being offered online at SC4. So um, it was still very, um, I was still very capable of doing full-time school, full-time work, and, you know, trying to be the best mom that I could. <laughs> Okay. And, and so, you know, the progression of your career and the opportunities that came up, you know, you started to hit on and, and our next guest, we're actually going to talk about some of these things is the um, progression that you can take to a career much like nursing. Um, mm -hmm. We often talk about there's the ladder career progression or there's the lattice. And um, I heard you say a lot of words such as, you know, certified medical assistant and you started picking up medical skills and adding certifications and, and experience as your career progressed. And so that got you to the program at SE4. We talked to a lot of our, our students about that, about how you're gaining experience and technical skills. How did that help you get into the nursing program at SE4? And, and you know, how did that help you through that program? I think just having the, the background uh, knowledge that I had already started acquiring through um, working in the medical field. Um, and then I, you know, I was obviously high honors in school, in high school, and I did a lot of the, the sciences, anatomy and all that stuff. And so um, it just kind of pushed me more towards, you know, my goal of being a nurse. So SC4 was very um, open and inviting and easy to get into, um, very accommodating for people that were you know, adults um, still trying to have a uh, family and try to work and try to better themselves. And um, very nice, like as far as financial aid, working with you and everything. So um, I just did most of my prereqs, like I said, online and then, you know, applied for the program. Thankfully, I had the, the, gra the grades because like she said, like Carrie said, you do have to have like above 85%. And um, it started to be very competitive when I tried to enter a lot of like through all schools and stuff, it was nursing became very competitive and hard to get into. Okay. And so um, you continued and you, you entered the nursing program, you graduated. Um, where did you go from there? Um, I went to, my first experience was going down to 
Detroit receiving, I knew uh, the, the family practice doctor I worked with, his wife was a nurse in the emergency department at DMC Detroit receiving. And um, it's about who, you know, too. So I, I had an interview, I, I, you know, got it. And I was there for about five and a half years. And that was by far the best experience of my life. And I miss it, but <laughs> you know, you have to, you have to gain and then move on because uh, well, Detroit is a little rough. <laughs> I bet. So I'm going to ask you, you know, you just letter it into that. I was going to ask you what your day-to-day -day was, but now I'm going to ask, you know, what did you miss about that? You know, what did you enjoy so much over those five years? Oh, just the, the level one trauma um, experience and being in the ER, you experience all fields of nursing, ICU, OR, um, you know, all the, the Medicaid, all the med surge, everything you get all in one. Um, so that's what I, I miss most about it is actual, you know, nursing care and being in that adrenaline rush of an ER. And, and you said you kind of, you cross a lot of units there. What do you mean? Like what were some of the day-to-day -day responsibilities that you would do in those units? Uh, as far as being a nurse at that time? Yes. So, I mean, if you had a code stroke patient, you would handle stroke or neurological patients. If you had a um, congestive heart failure patient or a, uh, you know, lung issue, or they came in intubated, things like that, you had all fields. So in the ER, you started out with nursing as um, you start them all and you kind of keep them um, stable and then you take them to their nice places where they need to go, especially ICU. Very good. So you're a registered nurse, spent five years there. Where did your career go from there? Um, at that point, I uh, was being charge nurse a lot more and um, getting into, um, you know, like the bachelor's aspect of nursing uh, because a lot of management positions, you need to have a bachelor's in nursing. Um, so I, I was, you know, full-time doing the mother, they were getting more involved in sports and all that stuff. So I, I looked into going to Chamberlain online for my bachelor's. And so that's the route I took. And I did that in 11 months. And then there was a bridging program to your master's. And so I just continued. Very good. And, you know, how did you handle that? um that work and I asked Carrie this you know that's you know you got your classes going on you're working you know what what was that like it was intense it was very intense but if you want it you're gonna do the work for it and you're gonna you're gonna reap the rewards at the end okay so what when you when you graduated from that program at Chamberlain where did your career lead you after that um I so I applied to the uh, master's in nursing um, and bridged into that. And I always knew I wanted family practice because I, I like the whole, the whole realm, you know, babies to geriatrics. So I knew I wanted to do that. So I shadowed for a little bit with, um, you know, some of my family practice doctors that I knew of and, um, just got into it and, you know, did the, the masters in that, which was quite intense. Like Carrie said, it's a lot of didactic and, uh, major research and, paper writing. So, um, but it gets you more into and more ready for the actual, you know, hands-on of performing, you know, uh, physical assessments more thoroughly as a, a provider with a nursing background. So. And, and so after you graduated from that program, what degree or certification did you obtain? Um, family, family practice, um, nurse practitioner certified, um, and then I also have all my other, you know, ACLS, you know, all the trauma certifications, PALS, all that. Um, but that just comes along with, you know, remaining and maintaining certification. Okay. Um, and then I got into um, actual internal medicine and in my um, full-time job that I am now is um, a hospitalist group and I'm internal medicine. So all the admitted patients we see daily and, you know, work on that okay um and so as a nurse practitioner what's the difference between being a rn and nurse practitioner um different different certification obviously a lot more money as far as your expenses but worth it um but as far as the the roles uh you lose a lot of your um bedside nursing i would say when you're a, a higher you're a practitioner or provider um, 
but at the same time, you still, you know, I'm not a doctor. I don't want to be a doctor because I love and, and cherish the nursing aspect of everything and that bedside manner. Um, so I think that, that that helps me with actual patient care. And then, you know, your higher certifications obviously help you to succeed in all your charting that you do. Well, and you keep, and you mentioned higher certifications. What types of certifications have you gotten since you gradu- graduated as a nurse practitioner? Um, well, I have to have um, I have to have trauma certification. I have to maintain um, uh, there's certain hospitalist qualifications and things that you need to keep up and do. A lot of it is um, maintaining your you know your CMEs or your um, continued medical education credits which kind of keeps you up to date. I mean, you're in the practice every day performing, you know, performing, providing health um, care services. But um, if you're not still up to date with, you know, the, the schooling aspect of it, where you're constantly looking for research and updating yourself on that, um, the CMEs kind of provide you with, you know, standard up-to-date information, keep you kind of up to date on all your, you know, the new and upcoming things and stuff that they um, require of healthcare. A lot of COVID things too that we've been dealing with. So every day is a new learning process with all that information with the CDC. Well, the reason why I asked that and the reason why I replaced the spotlight there for a little bit is that one of the things we talk about with our students as they work through high school and they're they're trying to pick programs or careers is the importance of academic degrees. You know, you look at a two-year associates or you look at a four-year bachelor's and beyond with a master's or a doctorate level um, academic degree, but we talk about certifications. We talk about credentials. And in, in, in our language, in our industry, we, we call them stackable. And Jessica, what you just talked about is you are actually, you, you got an advanced medical degree, but you continue to stack education mm-hmm. form of certifications, credentials, and Carrie does as well. Mm-hmm. And you're continuing to stack these on top of your academic degrees or the certifications and what that doing, what's that doing is progressing your career and it's opening up more opportunities for advancement throughout. Um, so I, I just wanted to really pause there for a second and to make that point because we, we talk about that a lot with our students and our families. Um, well, this is the, getting to the best part now is, is, you know, what's the best part of being a nurse practitioner practitioner? <laughs> um, I think that, um, I, so like, as I work in, I did do some ER time and stuff and, uh, urgent care. And so a lot of that was, um, lack of education and time. Um, so it made me move more into the internal medicine portion of it because I get to see these people continuously for their admission and I get to work with them and work on them daily Um, as far as education in their health, because we need to be accountable um, as patients and um, as well as, you know, providers, but it's a team. It's a collaborative of health. If you want to be better, you have to be involved in it as well. So I feel um, I get to continue on with my education portion with the patients and their family members on how they should be caring for themselves. Okay. And, and just for, for the understanding of the audience, like internal medicine, how can you summarize really that unit that you're working on and, and kind of what it's like working in there? I know you mentioned a little bit about their, the patient's health, but what, what type of responsibilities do you have as nurse practitioner in that role? Um, so I do the admitting and all the orders and I follow through with the consultations. Um, I continue with progress notes and, um, you know, discharges proper discharge education, medications, and, you know, summaries of their discharge and ensuring that they're following up with their providers and their required consultations that are, you know, wanting close follow-up. Um, so I just kind of do that whole process uh, at my job right now. Internal medicine is um, the whole hospital. So it's ICU, it's med surge, it's oncology. It's just um, collaborating with all your other providers um, to kind of have a treatment plan and work towards making that person better and get out of the hospital. <laughs> yes. And then that's the end goal. I, I, I assume. So, but the last question is I asked Carrie, what advice would you give a high school uh, student that's in the audience today, or maybe we'll look at this recording um, in the future. If they're interested in becoming a nurse and going down this career pathway 
in, in pursuing not only maybe an RN or a CNA, but also advancing their career much as like you and Carrie have done and taking advantage of these vast opportunities? Um, I would have to say, stay committed, stay focused. Uh, like Carrie said, use the resources, explore your options. Uh, don't just limit yourself because you know you're a poor family that can't afford college. There's there's ways. There's plenty of money out there that can help help people that really want to. Um, it's a, a unexplainable, rewarding career, and I I am truly grateful for what I have. Thank you so much, uh, Jessica. And we'll be coming back to you much as like I talked to, to Carrie about um, in the question and answer period. Um, and that's a lot of information all about nursing as well as becoming a nurse practitioner. And he hit on another point. I wrote my notes right here is financial aid and um, the topic of uh, affording college and paying for college and, and navigating that process. Um, and I'll touch base on that in the closing a little bit um, in terms of what you can do to help you get ready for after graduation and post-secondary education plans. Well, our next guest, thank you so much, Jessica. We're gonna move to our last and final guest. Um, Deanna Kaufman is joining us actually from St. Clair uh, Tech, which is an education center here at St. Clair County Reese's campus. Um, uh, Deanna is a health careers exploration instructor, but she also is a BSN and RN and a CTE instructor. Um, she's a graduate of St. Clair High School and um, is uh, joining us to talk a little bit about her career as an RN, as well as um, what she does now at St. Clair Tech. So um, my first question is, talk to us a little bit about tech and the program, because um, you were in tech when you were a student at St. Clair High School, is that correct? That is, yeah. So what program yeah, are you Sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. What's up? What program were you in when you were in high school? I was in the um, health careers exploration program um, at Tech my junior and senior year. Um, so there was two health programs available when I was in high school. Um, they had two CNA classes at Tech and then they had health exploration. Um, and I chose exploration because I I knew I wanted to be in healthcare, but I didn't really know what I wanted to do yet. I thought maybe radiology, um, maybe nursing. I wasn't quite sure. So the exploration program sounded appealing to me when our counselors came around our junior year talking about it. Um, sounded like it could show me the different careers that were available. Okay. And what year did you start that program at St. Clair High School? So um, tech is for juniors and seniors in high school. So I entered my junior year, so 2010. Um, and then I did my senior year as well. So my junior year, um, the way the health program worked was I did like a half day at tech and a half day at my high school. So um, the first year we did classroom work and job shadowing. So I got to shadow different um, health careers my junior year and decide what ones were not what I wanted to do and what ones I was more interested in. Um, and then my senior year, I got to select somewhere that I was really interested in and was able to internship, um, have an internship for my senior year. So my senior year, I did a half day at my high school and a half day at my internship. So for that whole year, so that was really nice to be able to um, not only shadow, but actually work with healthcare professionals while I was still in high school, network with um, people in healthcare and really see if that's what I wanted to do. Um, where was your internship at? I interned, I ended up interning at a pediatric um, office, actually uh, Children's Healthcare on the School Street. Um, so at the end of my senior year, I thought I wanted to be in pediatrics, but you know, that changes too, so. Okay. Um, and so when you graduated from St. Clair Tech and St. Clair High School, what certifications did you leave that program with? So the program that I took, the Health Careers Exploration Program, it certified me in um, BLS, so like um, uh, CPR. Um, so I had that certification and that was the only certification I earned out of high school. Um, but through my internship, having that experience on my resume. Um, it looked really good on my resume and having, again, networking with those people. Um, I had a lot of connections now because of my internship. 
um, where I was able to actually work in other medical offices and apply for nursing school right out of high school. And um, it just helped, helped kind of get right into the healthcare field. Well, that's going to be my, my, was my next question. So you got the certifications, you graduated from high school and tech. Where did you apply for the nursing program and where did you enroll at? So I went to Baker College in Clinton Township. Um, SE4 was a consideration as well. Um, the reason I chose Baker, um, I had a scholarship, so it was kind of hard to turn that down. Um, and I was also still able to stay at home. It really took a lot of stress away. Um, I got accepted to Western University and I considered going away. Um, but then I weighed the pros and cons. And again, I had that scholarship in my in my wheelhouse there. So I, I chose to stay home um, and stay local. And I went to Baker College um, for their nursing program. And how long was that program? I did my associate's degree. So typically associate's degree is two years, but theirs was an accelerated program at the time. So I actually did it in a year and a half. So it cut like a semester off, which doesn't seem like a lot saying it out loud, but it's a lot when you're going through it. And, and a big supporter of tech and the programs there, especially if, if you're, you're exploring a career, you want to get technical education in their programs while you're in high school and all the vast opportunities and experience and credentials and certification that you can get. So how did that help you when you're in a nursing program at Baker? people in class a lot of people tend to wait um, a little bit like either become parents or work a little bit before but they go into nursing school but um, so I was a little on the younger side compared to my classmates um, and I had like the least amount of experience when it comes to actual work because I was right out of high school um, but because I went to tech when it came to healthcare specific experience I actually had more than a lot of my classmates um, which was kind of weird because I was younger, but I had more healthcare knowledge um, and that background just being at tech um, and the opportunities that my internships provided me with too. So I feel like um, just having base knowledge of basic medical knowledge, medical terminology, even just like the, um, the soft skills that we teach at tech, it, like professionalism and how to communicate and speak to patients and present yourself professionally, I feel like I had an edge up on that and that too. So it definitely helped. So after graduating from Baker, where did your career take you from there? So I graduated Baker with my associate's degree and set for my board exam. So I was an RN um, and I started working as a nurse at McLaren Port Huron. Um, I worked on a med surge floor. Um, we had orthopedic surgery patients. So like knee replacements, shoulders and all that kind of stuff. And we also had bariatric patients, so weight loss surgeries. Um, so I worked midnights um, full time there, right out of nursing school. Um, and I was there about a year. And um, at that time, I really, I took that position just to get my foot in the door, get started working right away um, and get my skills honed in in, in my nursing. Um, it's, you can only learn so much in school. You, you're the real learning comes when you start working. Um, clinicals help, but it really helped me hone in my skills um, on a med surge unit. I decided on specialize in labor and delivery. So while I was working there, um, I just kind of kept my eyes out for any openings in that field. Um, in order to specialize in nursing, you really they really look for some kind of um, experience in nursing. So it's good to start to in, to start in a med surge unit is again, a good place to learn and get comfortable with the whole nursing aspect of things. Um, so yeah, I worked there for about a year and then I switched over to labor and delivery at um, Ascension River District, the St. John River District when I started. Very good. And med surge has came up a few times with Carrie and Jessica. Talk to us a little bit about what a med surge happens on a med surge unit in the role that a nurse plays on that unit? Yeah, so med surge stands for medical surgical. 
patients and it's kind of just like a you just get a hodgepodge of patients on those units it can be um, any type like you can have sick patients you can have flu patients you can have um, surgical patients they try not to mix like dirty with clean patients like sick patients with surgical patients but that are the night before surgery they have reserved you can have cardiac patients um, so it's just kind of a melting pot of different diagnoses um, which is why it's a great place to start in nursing because you see a little bit of everything and you have to learn how to differentiate care based on all these different diagnoses. Um, so yeah, and as far as nursing responsibilities, um, on a med search floor, you're really in charge of monitoring your patients. Um, typically you have anywhere from like four to six patients on your caseload. Um, you have to monitor each diagnosis, make sure each patient remains stable. Um, it's the, any therapies that they need during that time, any medications they need. Um, you work with your um, aides if you have any on your unit to help them to the bathroom, help them make their meals. Um, you're in charge of all that start IVs, wound care, <laughs> changing bandages, um, helping with range of motion exercises. You can help PT, you can help all the specialties. Um, so really you're just kind of making sure everyone stays good and is prepared for any procedures that they need during their stay. So where did your um, career go from there, from the med surge unit in the new at the labor and delivery? Um, did you advance from there before you went to St. Clair Tech? Yeah, so I worked in labor and delivery for four years um, and I loved it. It's hard to beat delivering babies every day. That was like, I loved it. Um, it was very different from med surge. Definitely, I mean, you had one type of patient. So <laughs> pregnant mom, having a baby. That's, that was my new realm. Um, so it was definitely a lot to learn. Um, and I think that's a big thing about nursing is when you switch specialties, um, you may not even need to take more classes to learn that specialty. It's all on the job training. So um, when I switched specialties, it was, like I said, a whole new world. Um, I was, I felt brand new again. <laughs> um, so I worked there for four years. Um, the hospital I worked at, we were really hands-on with our patients during delivery. So I got to um, take care of the mom during labor, um, help with pain management, um, monitor contractions and monitor baby. I got to catch babies and help in C-sections and take care of newborns. Um, so that was all really exciting. Um, I got the opportunity to move up in my unit. So um, I was always looking for a way to advance my career. I knew I loved labor and delivery um, and didn't necessarily want to leave it, but I knew that I wanted something more. Um, so I was looking for opportunities and one kind of fell in my lap. I was promoted to the unit educator. So I actually provided the education to new staff on our unit and made sure everyone had um, stayed up to date on needed to be specialized in labor and delivery. Um, so like in labor and delivery, just like um, Jessica was saying, you have those stackable um, credentials there for trauma. If you work in the ER, you can get all these trauma certifications. When, when you work in labor and delivery, it's kind of the same thing. You have all these different certifications that you need in order to work in there, which you earn on the job. Um, so I was in charge of making sure everyone was up to date on those. Um, but in order to have that educator position, I had to go back and get my bachelor's degree that uh, was part of like sign here if you accept this position, but you have to go back to school to get your bachelor's degree. So um, that was kind of a push to really get going on that advancing. Um, so I went back and got my bachelor's degree from there. Um, and that, um, like Carrie said, it just kind of opened up more doors for me once I earned that degree too. So. 
Yeah, um, once again, I'm going to just continue to make that point home is the more education, the more experience, the more credentials and certificates, it opens more doors. So that was very well said. Um, and it opened a door for you to come back to St. Clair Tech as an instructor. And talk to us yes. a little bit of, you know, what led you to become an instructor and really start prepping the next generation of nurses and, and healthcare professionals. So it's kind of funny how it just came full circle for me. Um, I kept in contact with my tech teacher um, and I still talk to her all the time and ask her questions on how to teach this class. Um, but I kept in contact with her and she was getting to the retirement age. She reached out to me to see if I was interested in taking her position over. Um, she knew that I had went through the program. She knew where it led me in my career and she thought I was a good fit for that. Um, and she was right. I was so excited to do that. Had being the educator on my unit, I learned that I really love to teach. Um, and I felt like it was rewarding, just like nursing was too. So, um, I thought, why not give it a shot? And, um, yeah, this is my fourth year teaching, um, health careers exploration, which is the same program I took when I was in high school. So it's kind of cool to see now, um, like being in it many years ago and now teaching it, I got to revamp the curriculum, make sure it was all up to date with current nursing practices, current CDC guidelines and all that stuff. So um, just to kind of make a fresh start for that was really cool. Um, and again, another certification I was able to add, I had to have my bachelor's degree to teach at a career and technical education center. So I'm not a teacher, I'm not a certified teacher, I'm a certified technical education teacher. So I couldn't go to any high school and teach English because I wouldn't know how to do that, not certified to do that. I can only teach in um, CTE schools and um, only healthcare classes. So um, it's kind of cool to have that specialty too. Yes, and you know, I'm gonna ask this, and I know you talked a little bit about there's health, there's two pathways that you take at tech. So there's health careers, exploration, and then there's another pathway. So talk to us a little about how the students choose. Yeah, so there's two health programs offered at tech. Um, again, I teach health careers exploration, and then there's a health CNA class, um, certified nurse assistant class. So the CNA class um, students can enter their junior or senior year and they learn all the same stuff we do in exploration um, for the first half of the year. And then the second half of the year, they focus on becoming certified as nurse assistants. So they earn a CNA certificate. And then after they're certified, they can actually go out and work in um, care facilities or anywhere that's hiring CNAs and actually get paid and they're still seniors in high school. So that's pretty great opportunity for them. Um, for my class in health careers exploration, we um, learn all your basic medical knowledge, um, anatomy and physiology, medical terminology, medical math, all this fun stuff. Um, and we also um, do job shadowing at the end of our first year. So um, they take students to hospital study and they can see many different fields in healthcare. And um, even we have students that are interested in vet medicine, dental, um, any specialties that are outside of the hospital that we can provide job shadow opportunities for those students as well. So it's kind of nice to see um, there's like over 200 possibilities of careers in healthcare. So you only see a few of them, but uh, it's nice to see what's out there. Well, that's gonna, it's gonna get to my next question here. What's the best part of your job? Um, and you can answer it now as, as you're at tech or even just in the profession as a, as a nurse. That's a hard question. People ask me all the time because they knew I was in labor and delivery. They're like, why would you leave that? What do you like better? And it's a really hard question to answer because they're both so different and they're both very rewarding in their own ways. Um, I am still a nurse, so, and I will always still be a nurse because I keep up my license and my certification. Um, so it's nice to know that I can always go back to the bedside. Um, you know, I have summers off now teaching, so it's nice to know that I can go back and um, be at the bedside. Like I said, they're both 
very rewarding jobs. I know that's kind of cliche, but it's so true. Like in nursing, you, especially in labor and delivery, I mean, you're there for a very special part of people's lives. It's a very intimate um, time of people's lives and you really build a connection with your patients. And it's cool to see like, they're coming back for their second kid and third kid and you've been there for all of them. And now our kids are in preschool together and that's pretty cool. Um, and then for teaching, now I'm, you know, sharing my students and I can really relate to my students because I've been there. I know what they're going through um, and they believe me. So that's really cool. <laughs> so it's <laughs> nice to be able to, you know, share my story with them and um, answer their questions with real life experience. So it's very, very nice to be able to do that. Well, my last question then, Deanna, is going to be, you know, what advice do you have for students that are interested in becoming a nurse or possibly going to tech in, in, in health careers in general? Um, like Carrie and Jessica said, keep your options open. Um, job shadow when you can. That's the great thing about tech is you have that opportunity. Um, and know that if you're interested in healthcare now in high school, it's probably going to be a passion for you. So um, there's so many different pathways you can take. So don't be discouraged if one doesn't work out. It's awesome to just move around in the field and see what is your calling and you really make a difference in people's lives, whether you know it or not. So it's a very rewarding field to get into. Um, it can be very challenging. Um, um, and we also have a medical terminology credit that transfers the SE4 to the next semester. Well, thank you so much, Deanna, and, and, and I'd like to plug at the end another credential certificate, and especially available here at SC4, you know, St. Clair County Community College that's in our in our backyard, and we're very fortunate to have a college in our county, um, and that's something that um, you can obtain when you're in high school through tech programs, or as Carrie and Jessica talked about, is they, they took their um, education uh, careers and went to SC4 to start there. Um, and so now this is the question and answer period. And so my question, and I'll open it up to anybody that like to answer is, um, you know, it's not a nine to five. And I know this knowing nurses that are um, close to myself and my family and friends, you know, what's a, what's a schedule of a nurse look like, a work schedule um, in terms of hours? Um, when I started as a nurse, so just RN, um, so I was working 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. Um, three days a week. So you had four days off. Um, you, depending on where you work, um, you either have a set schedule where you work those same three days every week or you do self-scheduling. So you can kind of work around if you have things going on in those other four days, if you're going on vacation. Um, so yeah, typically you do three twelves plus any overtime or on call that you need to do. Um, that's just as an RN. So, and Carrie, I saw you uh, you unmuted yourself there. Um, what's the schedule like for CRNA now? Um, our schedule varies all the time. I work usually three days a week. I usually work two twelves and an eight, or two twelves and a ten. Um, I also do occasional twenty four hour shifts where. Especially if you're on the weekends, 24-hour shift means you're the only provider in the house, um, you know, providing, you know, anesthesia care in the OR, um, anesthesia care and labor and delivery, um, airway management throughout the hospital. So um, it just varies all the time. Um, my schedule is uh, internal medicine. So I'm Monday through Friday, uh, 8 to 4, and I do... Uh, one on call night a week, um, and it's tonight actually. <laughs> but uh, so I answer the pages and take admissions and stuff. But um, yeah, mine's eight to four Monday through Friday. Well, that's not another great example of nurses, you know, take on so much responsibility. It's just then, you know, what's asked of them. I don't know what is. Um, well, I have a question here, and actually, I want to make sure to read it because it's actually from Shaylee uh, Sanger. Um, that's a St. Clair High School 12th grade student. She was actually a guest panelist um, last spring helping us transition um, the ninth grade class throughout high school. So she said, would you recommend getting a BSN right away? Or would you, would you work as a, um, an RN and gain experience before getting your BSN? 
I think it's it really depends on what your goals are. Um, you can enter a lot of nursing careers right now with your associate's degree, and actually they're starting to hire LPNs now again too because there's such a nursing shortage. Um, it's always great to have that BSN. Um, I couldn't be where I am. None of us could be where we are without that BSN. Um, but it's something that you have to see if it's right for you. So like for, I think all three of us, it sounded like we started as associate's degree nurses, RNs, worked as an RN and then went back to school um, online to get your bachelor's degree while you're working. Um, again, I think it depends on how far you wanna go right away. Um, you can get pretty much any entry level nursing career um, with an associate's degree. Back in the day at Carrie and Jessica, I don't know if you guys, I've been out of the hospital for a while, but I know there was that magnet status that you had to have a BSN. I don't know if that's still a thing. I don't think so. I don't know. I'm not really sure. I haven't heard of that lately, but I do agree with you, Deanna, that it just depends on how fast you want to progress your career. I mean, an RN is always good if you want to pay for your bachelor's or if you're young and you know that you want to go on to school right away. I would suggest going to just a four year school right away because I did have to redo a lot of my prereqs uh, when I went to Oakland University. So I had to double up classes. Um, I, I, we also have a question here says um, for Deanna, you mentioned that if you're in high school and you're interested in medicine, that it's probably something that stays with you. What are some pathways that your former students over the last four years have taken that may not be uh, specific to certain uh, medical pathways, but outside of medicine, you know, maybe they went in a different route. I'm trying to think. I've had students that decided medicine was not for them um, after their first year with me in tech, so they didn't return for their second year, which is just as good as finding out it is for you. I think that's a great thing. That's a lot of students go into um, the Army and the Navy. They were interested in being um, combat medics. It's hard to say that they went outside of medicine other than there's one that sticks out in my mind that I know for sure went no more medicine for me, not my thing. Um, and maybe like I've had students that are kind of put off by the hands-on aspect of medicine. So they go more into like behind the scenes work like medical records or receptionist. Um, filling and coding is a huge thing right now. Um, so it's still in the healthcare field, but it's not like hands-on with patients. Then we just had another one come in and said, other than tech and dual enrollment, what other ways would you suggest to prepare yourself for medical nursing career pathway? And I assume that's it's from our guest, Lauren, um, it, talking about what can she do now? And that's a question we get asked a lot. And I love it because they're passionate about, let me get started. This is something I'm interested in, but I don't want to go into college or the nursing program with a blank slate. And it sounded like a lot of you did not. You had dual enrollment and started Carrie did and started that path in high school. You know, Jessica started in the career path, you know, as a medical assist, certified medical assistant. And Deanna, you started in tech. And so if we're not going to talk about tech and dual enrollment right now, um, what would your advice be for high school students that want to start, you know, building that resume and building their experience to lead into nursing, um, you know, pretty quick after they graduate. Getting into the, um, you know, a healthcare field, um, getting into um, like mental health, like I did, or trying to get into a doctor's office or trying to get in like as a, on any, you know, hospital unit as a, a technician or, you know, patient care tech, where you kind of gain some experiences and see, you know, hands-on, you know, what the nurses are doing, how they're doing things. And it kind of like confirms and justifies even more of, of what you want and why you want that. So that was my greatest opportunity is being in those actual, you know, work environments where I could have that hands-on experiencing and, and actually, you know, confirm, yes, I a hundred percent want to do this nurse, you know, whatever path I was in at that time. Um, I think what we're going to do now is kind of wrap up unless I see some questions um, come through here. Uh, that's a great question. I'm probably going to add on a little bit with Jessica 
Um, you know, one of the things students can be doing right now um, to prepare if they're not in tech and they're not in due enrollment is take advantage of the opportunities that are in your high school. You know, there's a lot of classes you can be taking and exploring, you know, your anatomy classes, your biology classes, your math classes. Um, if there's AP classes, you can take, you know, advance yourself by challenging yourself in the AP class and trying to gain college credit by passing that test at the end of an AP class. So, and start to figure out your interests, you know, see, start talking to your family members, friends of the family, you know, maybe if um, there's somebody that you know that's in a medical profession that you're interested in, maybe set up a, an informal uh, job chat or maybe even a conversation with them to ask them a little bit like we did tonight with Karen, Deanna and Jessica, what their career is like. I always say one of the most important things with career in college is you have to start the conversation, you have to start the planning. You have to get started no matter where you're at, no matter what grade level you're in. A couple of notes as before I, I put, make my closing statements here for the evening. Um, we talked earlier about how nursing is the second hottest career in Michigan. Um, and, you know, with over 7,000 openings, uh, annual openings over the next six years, well, nurse practitioners is also on that list of 50 hot careers. Um, they're looking at 340 projected job uh, openings every year for six years, which is a 16% annual growth in that industry. Um, and then Deanna's role as a, a secondary school teacher um, that's either a career in technical ed or special ed, um, that's looking at 1,700 annual openings with a 4% growth. So tech ed and, and CTE is also expanding in, a, in on the top 50 um, list. So not only is nursing just an absolute booming industry, it provides diverse pathways, lots of opportunities once you get into it as a CNA, which is certified nursing assistant, an RN, BSN, or beyond to the advanced degrees that our guests had tonight. Um, I'm going to uh, just close down the evening with a little bit of um, where do you, you're going to go from here. So, and that's always a question is, is, you know, where do I go from here? And I got this, all this knowledge. Well, that's, a, that's the end of our, our fall webinar series. Uh, we had four installments. Um, as you can see right there, so this is the fourth one. However, we will be having a winter series as well as a, a, a spring summer series um, at the end of the school year. So stay tuned. Um, that'll be released um, as we get around the holidays. For the seniors um, in the audience, uh, we had our senior planning webinar to kick off the fall central series. Um, this was recorded and can be found on our website at www.bwcan.org. Um, and we also published the fall uh, college planning checklist. And these are uh, items that you can be completing this fall to ensure that you stay on track over the next few months. Um, some of these things may be completed, some things not. Um, this is available on our website as well. You can go ahead and take a look at that and um, see you know, where you're at with your planning if you are the, from the class of 2022. Um, if you go onto our website, which is uh, bwcan.org, um, you can um, also find the recordings of 10 webinars from the previous year of 2020, 2021, as well as the recordings of the uh, trades and apprenticeships and the one that's on your screen right now. We always want to send you back to your school districts. And what we mean by that is, um, and, and Carrie brought it up in our first conversation, is how she went to her counselor. Um, each high school has guidance counselors that can help prepare you for your career and college plans after high school. Uh, St. Clair County, we're very fortunate to have college advisors. Um, these are five of them and their schools listed here. And actually Port Huron Northern also just added a, a college advisor, uh, Kaylee Rakes, that uh, two weeks ago. So now in St. Clair County, we have six of them. Um, they're specialized, they're high, highly trained, um, advisors that can help you with every part of your career and college planning for after graduation from uh, navigating the enrollment process, financial aid and FAFSA applications, um, finding the perfect fit for a major and you know what schools are perfect for those majors and, and maybe what's the perfect fit for your needs and your family needs. I also made a reference to this earlier, and I think our three panelists really made a great job of what uh, the career progression looks like, um, it's, even though it's not a corporate ladder, but we also think of sometimes of our careers like a ladder, and there's just rungs that we're going up 
one at a time. However, a lot of times, and you heard it tonight, our career progression or education progression with credentials and certificates and adding academic degrees looks more like a lattice. Here's the homepage of our BWCAN website. Um, this is the hub for all of our things, uh, career and college wise. Um, you can find not only the webinar recordings and this recording, um, but uh, all your career and college resources um, as well. You can also subscribe to our BWCAM monthly newsletter that provides students and families with updated information and resources from St. Clair County RESA, BWCAN, and our community and state partners. This is the Michigan top 50 um, jobs that I, I referenced a few times this evening. Um, you can Google this, but also we'll follow up tomorrow with an email for all um, the people that were on the webinar this evening. And um, we'll, we'll also attach this flyer on there. And what this does is this shows you the projected annual job growth, the hourly, the average hourly range, the um, growth of industry, as well as the education requirements for each of these top 50 careers until the year 2028. And lastly, really way, a really important way to keep connected with us is to stay up to date and follow us on our social media platforms. Um, BW Can on Facebook and Twitter announces all of our events, all of our resources, and keeps you up to date um, on what's going on here in St. Clair County. Um, well, I, I, I want to, before I close down the webinar, I want to say a special thank you to all of our panelists um, for taking time out of their very busy schedules um, and being there being here with us this evening and sharing not only their careers, but all the insight of the education and, and everything that it, um, it takes to be a nurse and advance that career into the field that they're in now. I also want to say a special thank you to them for being our heroes every day. They mentioned about what the last two years have looked like, and they truly have been our heroes at the front line of this pandemic, and it cannot be said enough. So I also want to thank them again for that. Um, I also want to say a special thank you to my assistant um, this evening. I'll, I'll give him a little um, a spotlight here and introduce him. So uh, this is Hunter Anthony. Hunter, you want to give a little wave? Um, Hunter is in his first year um, advising at KPAC High School. Hunter has been my uh, technical support in the background this evening. And um, he's in his first year advising, as I mentioned, at KPAC High School. And if you're a KPAC student, um, please reach out to him and get that planning going. All right. And thank you again for everybody uh, coming uh, this evening. Um, I'm Nick Bouge from St. Clair County RESA. Uh, we look forward to seeing you uh, during the winter series. Have a great night.